بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome I'm Badr Dean Muhammad and you are watching the English news program Osmanlan National Television These are the main stories making headlines The Vice President of Somaliland responded to remarks made by the President of Somalia First Lady of Somaliland attended an international summit on FGM and early marriage U.S. and European airlines suspended their flights to Israel. President of Somaliland, Abdurrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli'i, responded to remarks made by the President of Federal Government of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, where the Somalia government are claiming responsibility for all land, sea and airspace along the Horn of Africa. The Vice President of Somaliland, Abdurrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli'i, held an exclusive interview with Somaliland National Television, responding to remarks made by the President of the Federal Government of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud. The President of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh, said that the Federal Government of Somalia is responsible for all land, sea and airspace within Somaliland and Somalia. He also stated that he entered into agreements with international marine agencies. The Vice President of Somaliland, Abdurrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli'i, stated that Hassan Sheikh's remarks are laughable and cannot be taken seriously here in Somaliland. The Vice President reiterated that all land, sea and airspace within Somaliland is in the hands of the government of the Republic of Somaliland and no other government can claim any control over it. The Vice President of Somaliland, Abdurrahman Abdullah Ismail Sayli'i, discussed the current relationship between Somaliland and its neighboring countries, Ethiopia and Djibouti, where he stated that Somaliland is on excellent terms with both neighbors. Vice President concluded by discussing a recent drought that happened within the Vice President of Somaliland discussed a recent drought situation that occurred within its borders, and the Vice President stated that the government will take every step possible to assist. The First Lady of Somaliland, Amina Sheikh Mohammed Jirdi Amina Wiris, attended an international summit for FGM or female genital mutilation and early marriage. The conference took place in the United Kingdom, capital London. The First Lady of Somaliland provided a speech at the event where she discussed what's been done by the Somaliland government to counter FGM and early marriage. On this note, the First Lady of Somaliland, Amina Wiris, said, Faced with these prevailing cultural practices and norms, the Somaliland government has committed itself at the highest level by enshrining the government's commitment to adhere to international principles and norms as well as human rights of women in the constitution. The government is in midst of legislating in this area to strengthen the protections already afforded by Somaliland's national gender policy, national youth policy and national health policy. Moreover, the government has also mandated three ministries, the Ministry of Labour and Social Affairs, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Endowment and Religious Affairs to address the issues of FGM and early forced child marriage. By adopting a multi-sectoral approach which includes government ministries, international agencies and civic society organization, the government of Somaliland is making a concerted effort to galvanize all elements of our society to participate in the fight against FGM and early and forced child marriage. As the First Lady, I have led the Somaliland National Women's champion initiative to raise awareness about the perils of FGM and combat its continued practice. Much has already been done on the ground in Somaliland. These issues were once taboo subjects which could not be openly discussed, let alone publicly addressed through national policies and adverts. Yet the national health policy now includes strict guidelines against medicalization of FGM. Any healthcare worker found to have carried out FGM will be subject to disciplinary action, which could result in the loss of the practicing license. The Sahan Mental Relief Organization held a donation ceremony which included the attendance of a local religious leader, Sheikh Adam Mahmoud Hiray Adam Siro, to assist the operations for this health facility. The Sahan Mental Relief Organization held a ceremony to mark donations made by members of the Somaliland diaspora and a local religious leader, Sheikh Adan Mahmoud Hiray Adan Siro, was in attendance for the ceremony. The ceremony itself was held in the capital of Somaliland, Hargeisa, and had many members of the public in attendance. Sheikh Adan Mahmoud Hiray provided a speech at the event, 
where he elaborated on the purpose of the ceremony and the significance of these donations made by various members of the Somaliland Republic of the Somaliland public to support this rehabilitation center. The Somaliland religious leader continued to mention that this organization have displayed why they are the people to assist in their support of the psychiatrically challenged in the capital of Somaliland, Hargeisa. Sheikh Alan Siro expressed special praise for donations from three particular individuals, which included the current Somaliland Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Mohamed Bih Yunis, Mohamed Ahmed Omar Agadable, and Sahra Omar Ahmed, who reside in the United States. This ceremony had members of the Somaliland diaspora currently residing in the capital of Somaliland, Hargeisa, in attendance alongside the head of the Sahan Rehabilitation Center. Mr. Bashir, who spoke at the event and, and showed his appreciation to the kind mercy shown by these kind mercy shown by the individuals concerned, Mr. Bashir concluded by stating that the organisation operates on such donations in this current contribution, which consisted of rice, sugar, wheat, and flour. You are still watching the English news program on Somali National Television, the only Somali speaking channel with an English news program. Now for our international headlines in detail. U.S. and European airlines suspended flights to Tel Aviv after rocket fire near airport. A bomb alert at Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion airport sent passengers running for safety on Tuesday. The Gaza conflict had unexpectedly widened its reach and the Gaza conflict had unexpectedly widened its reach after rockets landed near Israel's main airport. US and European airlines immediately suspended flights to Tel Aviv, causing travel chaos for hundreds of passengers. The US Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, ordered Delta, United and US Airlines and US Airways to halt flights for 24 hours. Europe's aviation regulator did the same. Lufthansa, KLM and Air France had already cancelled flights even before the regulator's warning. British Airways said it was still considering its position, but for the moment its flights were operating. One passenger said, I came to fly and my flight was delayed and then it was cancelled. And then there was a bomb alert. The whole airport rushed to the bomb shelters. It's terrifying. Another had said, they just said the flight was cancelled. Operational issues. They didn't want to elaborate on that. And when I called them, they said that there was no flight and I could just ask them to book me on El Al, which I'm trying to do. With the cancellations bound to have an economic effect on, on the Israeli Premier, with the cancellations bound to have an economic impact, the Israeli Premier has asked US Secretary of State John Kerry to restore flights. Israel has assured airlines the airport is safe for landings and departures, saying that stopping air traffic was handing terrorism a prize. Putin foes Russia will use influence on Ukraine rebels. The Russian president Vladimir Putin has said his government will use its influence with separatists in eastern Ukraine to allow a, a full investigation into the downing of flight MH17. But he told a meeting of defense and security officials in Moscow that the West must also put pressure on Ukraine's government to end hostilities. We are asked to influence the rebels. We will do that for sure, but this will not be enough, said Putin. Citing an alleged attack on Ukraine's tanks in Donetsk, Putin continued, We have to urge Kiev to respect elementary norms of decency and introduce a ceasefire, at least for a short period, while investigations are still ongoing. Putin's comments were the first detailed public response to Western criticism of Russia since the crash. The president said that Moscow would stand by separatists whom he described as part of a popular uprising against an illegal coup. He did not comment on whether Russia had been arming rebels, although he said, although he previously denied such allegations. That's the end of our news. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Ramadan Karim, Fi Amanillah.